Okay, we're going to talk about two different headphones that are both commonly recommended in the budget space. They're both open back headphones that are under $50. One is the Samsung SR850 and the other is the Koss KSC75. Now the Samsung SR850 is also very similar to a lot of other headphones made by Superlux as they're made from the same manufacturer. Now the Koss KSC75 is an ear clip headphone, but the driver technology has been around since the 80s. Now these two headphones look quite different. The Samsung is an around ear headphone and has a lot of design cues from the AKG K240, whereas the Koss is a small on-ear headphone with ear clips. Now personally, I'll just get right to the point. I might be a bit biased, but I think the Koss KSC75 sounds a lot better. Some may disagree, but for me, the Koss KSC75 is cheaper and also has a much more balanced sound signature. With initial listening, the KSC75 may seem a little bit bright, and it is true that in its stock ear clip configuration, it is a little bit of a brighter sound signature with a lot of bass roll off. On the other hand, the Samsung SR850 is a little bit more consistent in how it sounds, but its sound signature is not really something I prefer. In terms of things like soundstage, they are actually pretty similar. They're both open back headphones, and with the proper mix or binaural recording, they can both deliver a pretty good sense of space. Now detail and resolution is something that's not completely agreed on in the audio community, but the way I like to explain it is as a descriptive term for the perception of sound, but maybe not necessarily how the driver is performing. A lot of this can come back to frequency response and the masking effect. Another thing that I really like about the KSC75 is it's very popular for modding. It's been a really popular modification to clip them into a different headband design and as well change out the pads, turning them into more traditional style on-ear headphones. Let's look a little bit more into the measurements and see what we can get out of that. Okay, let's look at some measurements. Now the first thing to remember is that my rig is not an official grass measurement system and the pinna is both a little bit outdated and more stiff than what is commonly used. This is a lot more apparent for on-ear headphones because the pinna is a lot more stiff and doesn't deform like a more advanced or realistic pinna does. So there will be some deviation from my measurements compared to measurements taken with a more realistic pinna. Okay, so first of all, let's look at the Samsung SR850. So the first thing to note is that this is a V-shaped open back headphone. It does have a bit of a bass boost, and then a substantial amount of treble, especially in around the 6 to 8K region. Now this region is something that is a little bit concerning for me. For me, when I wear this headphone, it doesn't sound very well balanced. The peak of the treble in this area emphasizes a lot of frequencies that I find to sound rather harsh or grainy. Some may say that this sounds low resolution. Now earlier, when I talked about a masking effect, what that means is if multiple sounds are playing in the same region, but there are peaks in the frequencies, those higher peaks can actually mask out the lower ones. Our ears and brain filters out a lot of noise that it figures is unimportant. As well, when we have these peaks, those quieter frequencies surrounding it can often get masked out and you end up only hearing the specific frequencies that have peaks in them. This is troublesome, especially in this headphone because the peaks are right around areas that can sound a bit harsh or grainy. So when we bring in the Koss KSC75, the first thing we'll see is that the treble isn't quite as pronounced as the Samsung. As well, the upper mid-range is a bit more pronounced as well. Looking at it this way, we can see that there is a lot more emphasis in the mid-range of the Koss KSC75, although it is still a bright headphone. You'll also see that it does have a substantial bass roll-off. So this is something to be aware of. In this straight stock-to-stock -stock comparison, they both have their issues, although personally, I prefer the Koss KSC75. Where the KSC75 really starts to shine is once it starts to get modified with the popular mods for it. And now the first most common mod is just to change the pads. One of the most common pad swaps for the Koss KSC75 is the Axi pads. The Axi pads increase the bass a little bit and also lower some of the treble. Looking at this compared to the Samson, to me it is more preferable and in listening tests, I do prefer the KSC-75, but that's not the only mod for the KSC-75. Another mod is to put it on a headband. When you put it on a headband, it's, it's more than just comfort. It also adds a little bit more clamp to the headphone, making it sit on your ear a bit more secure and a little flatter. So when we take the KSC-75 and we put it on the headband, now it starts to look a little bit more like a lot of conventional headphones. 
It is still bright, but the treble extension is extended a bit as well due to having a better clamp. Likewise, with the first mod, we can put Yaxi pads on it, which once again lower the treble and also increase the bass. This is a very popular configuration for the Cos KSC 75, but one thing you'll probably notice is that it does increase the mid bass a lot, which in turn, the increased mid bass also makes this sound a little bit darker. It still sounds relatively balanced and more pleasing to me than the Samsung, but it is something that you might notice. But this isn't where it ends. A mod that I started doing when I was experimenting with my KSC 75 was having it in this configuration and then putting a piece of paper towel in front of the driver. I did this expecting it to lower the treble, but what actually happened was it also got rid of a lot of the mid bass. So when you have the KSC 75, with the axi pads on a headband with a relatively decent clamp, adding a piece of paper towel in front of the driver seemed to smooth out the treble even more and lower a lot of the mid bass. This ended up being a configuration that I really like, and for about $35 is one of my favorite open back headphones at that price range.